Hey there, leaders. Welcome to Coffee with Ken Live, where leaders grow. So the reality is productivity has plunged. Unit labor costs have skyrocketed. So what's happened to your team ROI? As noted in this week's email, here's a clip from an article shared by one of my favorite business writers. She's actually the chief investment officer at Charles Schwab, Liz Ann Saunders. You ready? Here we go. Amidst a slowdown in economic growth this year, companies have continued to hire at a relatively strong pace. That has resulted in a toxic combination shown in the chart below. I'll show you the chart in just a minute. In the second quarter of this year, productivity plunged by 2.4% percent year over year, which was the worst drop in the data going back to 1948. Ugh, that's not good. Unit labor costs soared by 9.3 percent year over year, the fastest increase since, not as bad as 1948, but 1982. Ugh. So, who would you say is at fault for this? Well, maybe a better, more focused way to ask is, who will be blamed? Yeah, let's make sure it's not you. We'll start with proof this concern is real. I'll show you that um, slide Liz Ann was referring to. And so hopefully there you can see that, uh, that good old slide there. And uh, sorry, I got my focus now. This is the graph to which Liz was referring. And I do want to make sure you understand it's not mine. It's a product of Charles Schwab, Bloomberg, and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So Liz continues, from the Fed's perspective, meaning the Federal Reserve, uh, they monitor a lot of things in this country. Most people understand that they do interest rate kind of stuff. They do more than that, but that's the biggie. As Liz said, from the Fed's perspective, that dynamic has the potential to keep inflation expectations elevated. Thus, higher labor costs are a target, which means their turn lower will likely coincide with lower inflation. Let me translate that a little bit. How are they going to get those higher labor costs down? They're going to slow the economy. How do they slow the economy? The typical way, you know, a lot of people think the Fed is this brain trust, but the tools that they have at their disposal, because they don't control all the elements. The elements that they can control most are the overnight interest rates that they charge to banks who borrow money. The tools that they have at their disposal, most people know of, all oh, interest rates are going up when the Fed is worried about things like high labor costs. The problem is there's already low productivity. And that's a concern. As Liz was talking about, she says again, that bodes poorly for virtually every pocket of the economy, fading pricing power and corporate profits for business as rates rise, plus weaker wage growth for workers. Let's see, when you woke up today, were you thinking, Gee, I, I hope they lower the amount of money I get paid. Well, that's what we're trying to make sure doesn't happen by addressing this issue that Liz is investigating and understands the problem that it can cause. Because one way to lower wage growth, increase layoffs. I don't want you to be one of those. No, I typically work with people who are leaders of teams, whether you carry the team term, uh, I'm sorry, the title leader, manager, director, supervisor, something else. If you are responsible for the output of a team, that's who I typically work with. And I want to make sure you aren't one of those who gets caught up in one of these layoffs because you're blamed for these things that in some ways are not totally within your control. But don't believe they're not within your control. They most definitely are. But also I got to give a caveat. Don't shoot the messenger. In fact, I think we should thank Liz for bringing this info to light 
for all of us. You know, for the average citizen, reduced inflation might be welcome news, but it provides a scary scenario for you. If you're one of those people I just talked about, leader of a team, a manager, whoever, who are charged with ensuring higher productivity and lower labor costs, just the reverse of what Liz shares, the environment we're in is causing. So you have to be doubly cognizant of the efforts you can use to get where you need to go, all right? Now, last week, we talked about ensuring you are ready to not only survive, but thrive during recessionary times. Have you thought about that since last week? So what do you think? Are you, are you ready to not just survive, but thrive? Because we are, I'm not saying we're in a recession. I'm not an economist, I don't make those decisions. But I think we're closer to recessionary times than we were a while back. So the first question should be, how do you know if you're ready for a recession? Well, I'll start with a quiz. I used to teach at college, Penn State's business college to be specific. Um, I've taught for a couple others, but all business stuff. But so I got to do quizzes, right? All right. So what's the magic that helps you boost the ROI your team delivers? So you not only keep your job, but also get the promotions, respect, and hefty pay raises you deserve because you get more out of your team than you're putting in. So if that's what you are thinking about, what is that magic we just talked about? How do you do that? Well, we've been talking about this ever since I started Coffee with Ken and specifically on the lives where I can go even deeper and deeper and deeper into these issues that help you, all right? Ah, if you just said the magic is the connection between what it takes to get an aircraft and flight suit or organization off the ground and to the desired destination, bingo, you win this, the, the prize for today. That's exactly right. So I think it's only fair if I let you know my part in this. Here's my pledge. I can fly boy. That's my nickname, handle whatever you want to go with or call sign. Pash, I'm here to help you use that connection to get not only where you want to go, but to where you could go. If you are on a quest to be the best, that's why I wear this flight suit, to serve as that reminder on your journey of how to get the results from your team that will eventually prove you're the best. You know, flyers rely on instruments to get where they want to go. In that vein, I have built a leader's instrument panel to help you know where you, your team are, and upon what you must focus now. Like all the instruments we recommend you use, and many of them are very similar to instruments I used while flying, okay? But like all of them, the one I'm gonna to share today, it's the first, and probably the, the basis for all the others, it's consistent with the tools we will share. I haven't yet shared our tools, but I will. And you can see in the yellow or gold, the labor costs going up and in the blue, productivity going down. Yeah, just the opposite of what we want. Don't get blamed, use this gauge. It's called the Team ROI gauge. And yes, it is ours. It's our construct at Supersonic Leadership. To begin to use this tool, where do you start? Now, most people start at the absolute wrong spot. Please trust me that this process I'm gonna give you has been vetted over decades, All right? The first thing to do, to do is to decide on the outcome you are attempting to achieve or where would you like to be? I mean, you and your team, okay? Now, this could pertain to just you. If you don't have a team, it could. Next, what actions are required to get and stay where you want to go? Then, what results will help you know you got there? And this is a, a problem I have with so many people. 
I used to ask my students, what's the most important thing when starting or running a business? And many of them would offer a great idea. And I'd say, sure, great ideas are by nature great, but they're not enough. Because just because you have a great idea, you know what, I'm gonna venture a guess, many if not most people have an idea about something that could help improve the world, but they don't take it to the next step. They don't determine, okay, what will it take the actions for us to get there, to put that into place? And then they don't go to the next step. And that's with my friends in good old Washington, DC. Yeah, they're real good about this. They always tell you all the, the benefits you're gonna get, but they never tell you how we're gonna measure whether or not what they put together worked. And I don't care whether they got a D or an R next to their name, they all do the same thing, but they don't talk about the results. Don't follow their lead, okay? Always understand, how will you know you got there? Now, only after the three we just covered, should you even consider addressing where are you right now on this gauge? Yeah, most people start there. It's a mistake. Over time, I'll help you understand why it's a mistake. This is the order that will get you where you want to go, especially if you are on a quest to be the best. All right. Now, I just asked you where you are and your team are. You might ask, have asked, hey, I got a bone to pick with you, Pash. Without understanding what constitutes poor, fair, good, or excellent, how would I know? I hope you did ask that question. That would show real insight, okay? Here's the issue. What industry are you in? What sector are you in? Where are you in your life cycle? Um, are you just getting ready to go to market or have you been out there for quite a while? There's so many other factors that would determine the answer about what constitutes poor, fair, good, or excellent. Okay, so here's the deal. That answer would require a conversation. And I am happy to have that conversation. I'm here, out there, you're starting to get the point. I'm here to help you, okay? So I recommend that you go here. There's the address, the website address, and that's where it's gonna take you. It's gonna take you to my Calendly page where you can find a time that works for both of us and you can book a call and we'll have that call and we'll help get you clarity. We'll help break through some of the things that may be holding you back. We'll work on developing a game plan to help you get where you wanna go. You know, let's go back to the, the uh, team thing that we're talking about right now is the team ROI gauge and where you are and where you'd like to be and what's gonna to take to get there. How are you gonna know you got there? So you might ask, does this fit into that discussion that we've been having about the five shifts? You know, number one is be the role model, then raise the bar, then adopt the soaring success system, then be a problem preventer, and then invest in coaching, right? Five shifts. Okay. Does it fit? Yeah. Everything I do fits into these five shifts. So let me ask you a question. How are you doing in terms of leading your team? Are you getting the productivity that is possible? Now, I'm guessing you're getting some productivity, but are you getting what's possible? Are you keeping those costs low? And not just labor costs, but we do so much rework because it always seems to be there's enough time to, there's never enough time to do things right, but there's always enough time to do them over. So I'm talking about all costs, specifically today because of Liz Ann's article, we're talking about labor costs. Okay, so getting productivity possible, keeping costs low, especially in terms of the scourge so many businesses have faced during what's been called the great resignation turnover. That's a monster of a cost, especially when the best and brightest leave your organization for what they believe are greener pastures. So let me ask it straight based upon your reaction to just the stuff that we've covered, how's the team ROI you've been able to deliver? 
I'm guessing you're not anywhere close to where you could be, which is why all these fit into shift number five. I don't mean this to be a, a, a self-serving item because this is what I do. This is how I help people. I'm telling you, and why call it investing? Some people wonder about that term. Well, you could just pay for coaching. It doesn't mean you're investing. You should make sure that you're not just engaging someone because they hung a shingle up that says coach on it. Do your due diligence. And sure, they have what it takes, including the willingness and ability to work directly with you and help you get where you want to go. You know, I'm very proud of my team. I call it our team. But in general, in, in specifics, it's my team. I don't expect it. But if you ever work with anyone at Supersonic Leadership, my company, and are comfortable with your experience, please let me know. So I ask, why would you want to know that? I've worked with an awful lot of people before, and I don't know very many of them that want to know bad news. If that's the experience you have, which is not great news, I want to know. Because I want you to have the support you need to, to, fill, to fulfill your quest to be the best. So no matter what is happening in your life, don't assume you can do it all on your own. You probably have some things that you do very well that I can't do or shouldn't be asked to do for sure. Especially when it comes to the results you generate from your team. I might know a thing or two because that's been my focus. It was a good part of my focus for about the 20 years I was an operational leader. And it's been pretty much my sole focus for the last 20 years doing what I've been doing. So if you come with me, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be an investment that's going to pay off huge dividends. Okay. But you choose, you do that due diligence. As part of your due diligence, I recommend you go here, go to that website, watch that webinar. And yes, it's free. I wouldn't do that to you. And then put into action the five shifts previously frustrated leaders make to boost the ROI their team delivers. Now, the next question should be, wait a minute, Pash. You've been talking about the need to uh, deal with low productivity and high labor costs. And now you're telling me that I should invest in a coach during these difficult times. Well, you got to ask yourself, and I've asked, I asked this last week too. Do you believe great outcomes in difficult times are impossible, let alone likely? And the answer to that is absolutely. And I have a place for you to go to read it. I mean, to prove it. I want you to read this book, From Worst to First. One of my favorite leaders, Gordon Bethune because he turned around an airline and let me tell you, they were in really bad times. Read his book and uh, ask me any questions. Share your concerns, share your doubts. I love hearing doubts if you've got them because I wanna make sure we cover those and we don't just sugarcoat everything and make you believe, oh yeah, there's this magic wand yeah, if some coach tells you they have a magic wand, they're lying, okay? It may be a little bit of work to get where you want to go. But the reward, oh, it's great. You know, I think that's enough for this week. I gave you a lot to think about. And I want to leave you with a couple of things. First of all, remember that note we talked about last week where those are the things that I had to review before I went flying so that I knew those kind of things that were out there that were impacting operations. Well, I'm giving you that opportunity to send me another notum. So don't forget, when you have an issue with which you would like help, send me a notum, email, response to a post, just like we're on right now, whatever works best for you, I will do my best 
to help you solve your issue. So what's the last thing? If you are putting in way more than you're getting out of your team, not likely you're living the life of your dreams. Don't continue to live this way and certainly don't believe that's just the way it is. Find your solution. I'm here to help. Until we meet again, do what you can to ensure you soar, my friends.